Henderson. Pressure being kept high by McGinn. of football so far and they have to change that if they want to overtake Aberdeen right at the death Hayes Hamlet's come across no handball the roars from the Aberdeen supporters in the south stand in front of us it as if it just caught me high up in the arms Stevie Hamlet Chase back for Hamill. Three minutes left in normal time. To Sangol, Shalem Logan. Nervous stab into the main stand by Logan. And at last, a little bit of urgency, a little bit of intensity from Motherwell. James McFadden. Just emerged as a footballer, wearing the colours of Motherwell. Not to help out the club. Lasley. Can Motherwell carve out a chance? Can they make Langfield work? Well, not this time, not properly. Langfield forwards. Hamill's the only one back for Motherwell. Chasing Hollis. Doing it off. Yeah, they one for one there. And the ball is just sweeping up at the back. Aberdeen inching ever closer. Vernon to the stride of McGinn. It's Hamill. Cuts off Stevie Hamill again. Close to the army again. Tinge of disappointment from the Motherwell players. They've not really performed today. I can understand the tactic early in the first half and, and even the first 45. And they've just found it hard trying to switch from being ultra defensive, you know, to attack minded. Logan sees the decision go his way. Stuart McCall and Motherwell running out of time. start the European campaign two weeks before Aberdeen. The team finishing second, it will be 17th of July. End of July, if you end up third. It's a considerable difference of just a quarter of a million pounds. In terms of second versus third. Indications are going to have an awful lot of added time just perhaps one minute confirm that for you shortly Lasley Anderson 400th Aberdeen appearance yeah, alongside Reynolds Anderson has been outstanding this season as well Moving freely, is he? Russell Anderson. Hobbling noticeably. Right on 90 minutes now. It will be just the one minute of additional time. to get up there to become one of the targets he'll do the honours this is it for Motherwell in the battle for second Lasley Jamie Langfield he couldn't get there Sutton and is it going to go over the line surely yes it does a call for Motherwell right at the death Craig Reid it's unbelievable Snatched it in added time at the end 
Sutton goes into the keeper. Oh, and this game just never stops surprising you. Well, it ends in controversy. Stuart McCall believes that, that ought to be it. Was there a foul on Jamie Langfield? That'll be one of the big talking points. But the Motherwell fans don't care. One little bit. On the final day, all is well for the Steelmen in the battle for second. Motherwell have overtaken Aberdeen. Seems a jubilee. Celebrations from Motherwell. Good evening, here's a look at some of tonight's top stories. The observatory issued the amber rainstorm warning twice in seven hours today and warned of flash floods. People scrambled to stay dry and roads flooded as drains struggled with all the water. There's also heavy rain and widespread flooding on the mainland, damaging farmland in Hunan province. Officials in eastern Zhejiang province have promised to suspend construction of a massive waste incinerator after a violent demonstration. Locals protesting are concerned the incinerator may affect their health and worsen pollution. The clashes in Hangzhou yesterday left at least 10 protesters and 29 policemen injured. Financial Secretary John Sung says the hospital authority has already been affected by the pan-democrats filibuster over the budget. Writing in his online diary, Tsang explained that the filibuster has caused the authority to dip into its fixed-term deposit reserves as a precautionary measure, meaning it will lose about $1 million worth of interest. I'll be back with another update in one hour. Coming up, check in current news, Newsline. Bands. Now apply on the ATV website. Release your positive energy with music. Take an awesome trip worldwide. Following the twists and turns of Dutch River. Listen to her wonderful stories. Travelling through India. Traditional lifestyles or modern developments. Different angles bring a different India. Documentary World, travelling the globe, tonight at 9.30. They can drive you nuts. From the most powerful roaring on earth, to the sexiest bodies you'll ever see. They're surely every man's dream. Drive it, every Monday night at 8. On this mystical tropical island, the breathtaking natural beauty is brought to life. An unbelievable variety of living creatures make it their home. See how the incredible circle of life turns. Join us on a magnificent journey of discovery. All about documentary, wildlife, home to richly colored birds, terraced rice paddies of barley, Monday night at 10. Stay close to fresh K-pop from the hottest selling artists to the up-and-coming superstars. Keep in touch with the latest chart of the Korean pop music scene on... Samsung Digital Special, Pops in Seoul, Thursday at 
Continental Evolution. ATV Miss Asia Pageant 2014 is now inviting applications. This program only reflects the personal views of the program hosts and or the individual contributors. Good evening, this is Newsline. I'm Michael Chigani tonight. Michael Tien, and we're going to talk about the high-speed railway and the big controversy surrounding that. Now, uh, Michael Tien, you're also New People's Party, and uh, you are also the chairman of the Legislative Council Railways Committee, right? And you look into the railways. Uh, of course, you were the head, the chairman of the old KCR, so you're very well versed on this issue. You know this issue very well. I now, pretend to. No, <laughs> you pretend to. The question that everybody wants to know, Michael Tien, is this. Was this whole delay with the high-speed railway, the two-year delay, was there a cover? In your mind, was there a cover? If you are referring to everybody in the corporation, I can say. No, the top-level people. If it's about the few that has been in the limelight, mm -hmm. I would say uh, consciously, I don't believe there was a cover-up after all the questioning and all the uh, answers that were given to us. I believe it's a case of two things. Mm -hmm. First of all is very eager professionals not conceding, willing to concede defeat. Uh, not willing to concede defeat. Defeat. So they were hiding the truth. That's a cover-up. Well, no, no, no. Not willing to concede defeat on the basis that they can play catch-up. Mm -hmm. It's actually a fine line between a cover-up mm -hmm. and somebody who is overconfident trying to make things happen. All right? There's a fine line drawn. I would define cover-up as somebody still telling you you can do something when they know they he cannot. is absolutely convinced he cannot. Now, as long as that person believes there's a 10% chance, all right? And he did not give a point blank guarantee that it can be done, but that he believed it could be done, mm -hmm. which is what came across to me in this whole thing, uh, then it does not constitute cover up. But Michael T. But you know. it did constitute, it, 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 then, then you have a second issue. The second issue is the recipient listening to this uh, promise. The, the recipient do due diligence mm -hmm. to ask simple, critical, and intelligent questions to do cross-check. All right? Mm -hmm. That is the most important thing. Well, let me name these two people. The first person to talk about was Jay Walder, the uh, CEO of the MTR Corporation, and the second person was Anthony Jung, the transport minister. Jay Walder called up Anthony Jung. No, I'm referring to Mr. T.C. Chu and Jay Walder. Okay, that's the project manager and Jay Walder. The project manager, T.C. Chu, had a track record of recovering mm -hmm. lost time. Okay, he so is actually quite famous in the profession. Right. He told Jay Walder that he could do it. Jay Walder then in turn called up uh, Anthony Joe. No, the, the biggest problem is he told Jay Walder he could do it. Mm -hmm. Jay Walder, Jay Walder did not do what he is, is paid supposed to do, <laughs> to do at $30 million a year, CEO of MTR, to ask him a few simple but critical questions. Mm. All right? 
which does not include, are you sure you can do it? But why then did Jay Walter call up the Trans Minister and says, uh, you know, uh, there may be delay, but please don't tell people we're trying to catch up. And then the Trans Minister says, okay. Anthony Jones says, okay, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. So three people are involved. It's like none of them were doing due diligence. No, it's not that simple. It's not that simple. Let me just, just go back in time, okay. right? That morning, he called up Anthony Jones yeah. and said, I heard you want to come clean and say mm. and tell the whole world we can make it. Right. Yeah, and Anthony Jones said, yes, according to my people's report, uh, they, don't feel, they don't think they can do it. Then Jay Walter said, okay, wait a minute, let me come back to you. Go and come in a meeting. My understanding is that that meeting was not a five-hour meeting, uh, scrutinizing every minor point, getting all the key statistics together, went through a whole due diligence exercise. They didn't do that. To convince himself, Jay Walder, mm -hmm. that I am willing to put my name on this thing, all right? And there would be no regret because I've actually asked everything that I could possibly ask, all right? To but make, you're saying he didn't do the, that. He didn't do that, right? What he did, my understanding, was to call them in and say, are you sure you can do it? Let me ask you once again, are you sure you can do it? And Mr. Chu says, yes, I can. Typical, this is a typical... Uh, pass the buck. Pass the buck, passive and unprofessional, irresponsible way of uh, being a Not superior. worth $13 million. Let me just ask you this. Second question everybody wants to know. Two people said they were going to leave, uh, and then a few days ago, Jay Walder, the CEO, says his contract's going to end next August, August next year, and he won't stay on. And this was something that was agreed on last year. Now, should heads roll? I mean, his head, his head is actually not rolling because he's saying, I'm leaving when my contract runs out next year. Should he leave now? OK, wait a minute. You said he didn't do due diligence. <laughs> wait a minute. What the chairman said, there was something else that's almost like tantamount to putting oil on fire. The chairman first said that that decision was made before this incident. And so it's nothing to do with this incident. Yeah. Then he said that agreement not to continue had nothing to, to do, do with, with this, this incident. incident. That is the part. Isn't that galling that is to you? causing an uproar. Isn't that, isn't, but don't you find that ridiculous? That by making that statement, the chairman, Mr. Raymond Chen, is in fact saying, I know we messed up on this thing. And uh, this man, as you said, uh, Jay Walder, did not do due diligence. But we had agreed last year that he is going next year. And his going has nothing to do with this scandal. Do you find that very obnoxious? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I reacted very strongly, right? I mean. Raymond is a good friend of mine. We've known each other a long time. He could have just told us the facts. Mm -hmm. The fact was that that decision was made before that saga full stop. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's it. And don't say you've got nothing to do with this. Don't say you've got nothing to do with it. Just, just, just stop right there. Well, and let people guess. Let people guess what actually happened. And leave a bit of a doubt, right? Exactly. So he just closed up everybody's... But he didn't uh, do that. He oh, was defiant. Yeah. Now, you know, there is now, as you say, an uproar over that. And uh, and everybody, everybody is, in fact, saying Jay Walder earns, I think, he earned 13 million last year. And he's also got stock options and so on. Uh, people are now saying that he should be penalized, even though he's going to stay until August of next year. He should not get his stock options. He should not get his bonus. Do you agree with that? Or should he just go now? Should they force him out? Um, let's look at what is feasible. Uh, I don't think uh, cutting off his salary, uh, uh, retaining all his bonuses, mm. everything is that simple. He had about $8 million a year in basic salary. Mm -hmm. Another five million on top, that's variable pay, mm -hmm. which supposedly has to follow a rigid schedule uh, of uh, formulas, a lot to do with financials, all right? Like uh, return on investment, like stock up, uh, stock share price, and all that. But what would you want the chairman? What would you do? All right, so let me, let me finish, all right? The five million dollar extra is, uh, uh, is something that you, they have to go by the formula. However, his boss, Raymond mm -hmm. Chin, as far as I know, has the power to adjust 
put on the scale factor. Then why isn't it doing? The final score, okay, to decide what the actual $5 million variable per pay is. However, I believe that the ability for him to scale down that is limited. Maybe only maybe a million or two. But okay? would you try to not the entire five? And worse off, there's a gratuity mm -hmm. at the end of the contract, which is probably worth another thirty percent. Okay, that part it is not easy for MTR to withhold unless they conduct an inquiry, come up with strong evidence to say that he is negligent, and therefore they would exercise that. So that is a long road. A shorter road, and which is the one I am pushing for, is an early termination of his contract, mm -hmm. maybe to the end of the year. So basically, everybody would know that he is paying a price for his action. Right now, he's not paying. It seems right. like he's not paying. Yeah, well, now he's walk, uh, walking well, off uh, scot free. Let me just ask you one question before the break. Uh, there's some talk that we, we are coming down so hard on Jay Walder because he is a foreigner. Would you say that is uh, true? No. All along, I am picking on him for one point only. When he interfered with the monitoring agency, mm -hmm. right, he circumvented the whole board and his chairman. He should have gone through the board and the chairman and say, I'm going to call up the minister and tell him that MTR pledge to open on time. If he had done that, I have no problem. He circumvented the whole uh, board and he the chairman. He kept the whole board in the dark. And went directly to the, the person minister. monitoring his performance. Okay? Making a pledge without doing that, that's still okay. Mm -hmm. But the part that got, got, uh, that got to me is that without doing a simple due diligence of asking T.C. Chu what his production rate was at the terminus in terms of the raw excavation and what the production rate need to be increased by to put it into operation on time. And then I asked that question at Let's Go TC's reply was that he need to double that rate. Mm -hmm. In other words, he had been maybe doing uh, a thousand uh, uh, cubic uh, meter of rock excavation a month, and in the remaining months he has to get it up to two thousand. Mm -hmm. Right? Anybody who's supervising someone like TC Chu should be able to have the intelligence to ask that simple question. All right? It's a very but he question. didn't do it. Right? He didn't do it. It was totally an act of blind faith. And based on that, he dragged the whole government into this thing. Let me just take a quick break. See you soon. Don't go away. The selection of the chief executive by universal suffrage in 2017 will be a milestone in Hong Kong's constitutional development. The basic law sets out the aim of achieving universal suffrage and the relevant principles. On this basis, we can elect our chief executive by one person, one vote. So what does the basic law say? Let's take a look. According to Article 45 of the basic law, the selection of the chief executive consists of three steps. First, nomination. A broadly representative nominating committee will be formed to nominate candidates in accordance with democratic procedures. Second, one-person, one-vote election. All eligible Hong Kong voters will elect the chief executive through one-person, one-vote. Third, appointment. Appointment by the Central People's Government as the chief executive. Following these steps, we can all elect our chief executive in 2017. Want to promote your latest products on television? ATV's 2014 Ad Easy Package is the right choice for you. Our promotion reaches as far as the Pearl River Delta region and southern China. And our price starts at just $68,000. Call 2992-8890 or our mainland hotline now. Thanks for staying with us. This is Newsline. I'm Michael Chigani. With me is Mr. Michael Tien, a legislative councillor with the New People's Party. He's also the chairman of the Railways Committee in the Legislative Council and former chairman of 
Kowloon Canton Railway. Well, chairman of the former Kowloon Canton Railway. <laughs> now, uh, Michael Teen, you said, and which was quite astounding, that the CEO of the MTR, Mr. Jay Walder, circumvented the whole board, including the chairman of the MTR, went directly to the transport minister, Mr. Anthony Cheung, and told him and make that, a pledge on behalf pledge of MTRC. On behalf of MTRC, they will try and get the job done on time. Against the advice of all of the minister's people. Right. Against the government advice, right? The government. And then Anthony Jung gave him the benefit of the doubt. Now, um, as chairman of the former KCR, could the CEO of the KCR have managed to circumvent you and the entire board? and dealt directly with the government on a major issue? The CEO at that time was Mr. K.Y. Young. The, he's somebody, passed away, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody I respected. Mm -hmm. He would, he could, but he would not. He would not do it? He would not. He could, but he would not. But you obviously had your hands very much. He would much give me enough respect. But you had hands on, on running that railway, right? You were the face of the railway. It didn't matter. I mean, I'm the chairman. I represent, represent the board. If KY at that time as CEO mm -hmm. wanted to have a direct dialogue with the monitoring agency. He would have informed you. All right? Because that carries a lot of political connotations. Right. You're interfering with uh, a government agency that is monitoring your progress. Uh, these are not small matters. Well, sh you know, how... It's not, it's not a call among friends and say, hey, trust me. Exactly, but how did this board, the MTR board, which included Anthony Cheung, the Highways Department Director, other government officials, non-executive directors, a lot of them appointed by the government, how come they were all kept in the dark about what was going on? The board didn't seem to know. No, 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 I don't think they were kept in the dark. They received Monday reports that submitted to them. A couple of board members said on the day. By through Jay Walder. Yeah, I know, but Mr. Teen, a couple of a couple of board members said, on the day that it was revealed that the railway would be delayed by two years, that they had only read about it in the newspaper. They weren't told. Oh, that was post November twenty second. Right, right, uh, right. I thought we were talking about last year no 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 i'm talking the about the day they came and make that pledge i'm yeah no no i'm talking about that i'm talking after that the board was totally kept in the dark about the delay of the railway and then when it was announced they were caught surprised as well honestly how is that possible honestly and I, anthony jung says i am surprised he is a transport secretary and he's a member of the board i can understand that up to november of last year but thereafter you that cannot. everybody is a bit passive they wait for reports from management. I would expect that when they came forth mm -hmm. and, tell the, and told uh, the entire community in Hong Kong that it is still uh, in, uh, on time, that the railway would be operational in uh, as uh, latest uh, 2016 September, because the pledge was that it would be mm -hmm. completed in 2015, plus six to nine months, or well, you know, whatever, right? That once that pledge was made among such public interest, that the entire board, the chairman, should be taking a much more active role in asking for progress at every but they ensuing didn't do it. board meeting they didn't do it. Uh, after November. Now, what transparent news board meetings, I don't know. I'm sure they have regular reports. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. But the reports did not indicate that they are changing their position. And the board, I felt, probably was as passive as before, probably also doing just simple Q&A. Now, what's the point of uh, Anthony Jones saying that uh, because of this whole scandal, they're going to restructure the board and appoint new members? Is there any point in doing that? Absolutely. This is something Donald Zhang should have done when he merged the two companies. Back in the days of the merger, mm -hmm. government was so eager to put KCR in the hands of MPR because they don't want to fuss And you lost them. out of being the chairman. Uh, <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. They, they can't afford.